Hey guys, what's up? It's Melody and today I wanted to talk about some of the reasons why people get into minimalism. And what is minimalism in general? Okay, the very first thing I want to say is that it's personal to everybody. Everybody has a different reason why they got into minimalism and they have a right to that reason. The reasons why people get into minimalism are very varied and they should be varied. It's uh, Values should be personal. We shouldn't live according to someone else's belief system because we're ending up with their conclusions in a way. We want to take in advice from different personalities and hear different sides, but we ultimately want to find out the best way for us. And if something works really well for us, we can't assume that it's gonna work well for everybody else, obviously. And so that's the primary reason why I like about minimalism is because when I go into another person's house that isn't minimalist or isn't organized, it never catches me. It never offends me or it never gets on my nerves in any way. I could I grew up in a house that was very cluttered and my grandma was a hoarder, but those things don't bother me because it's not it's personal to me, but it's not my identity. Minimalism is autonomy. The reason why I got into minimalism is because I think of it as freedom freedom from possessions, freedom from distraction, and freedom from rules. In minimalism, there's no one person who says you have to have this amount of things. That's not how it works. It works for you. In other words, you have as much as you need. So if you like arts and crafts, you have your arts and crafts. The only rule is that you just don't have things that you don't find useful and you don't find beautiful. But that covers the gamut. The problem is most people are going through life and they're not aware. So things are piling up. They're not paying close close attention. So in essence, minimalism encourages mindfulness to be cognizant of what's happening around you, which is very important. This is so important because it's not just the physical. It's not just affecting the possessions you have in your home. But once you're cognizant of what is happening as things are coming through your house, as you're cognizant of the things that are building up, you're being very aware of this, you can start to be aware of yourself, your own motivations and the things that are connected with you, how you're living your life in general. So for me, minimalism gave me efficiency, which is very important to my personality, and it gave me freedom to value the things that I really wanted to value and to improve my weak spots. The other thing that it gave me was space to observe and to think to connect dots, not just connect two dots because they're close in proximity to each other, but ask questions and wonder why why is this related to this and keep asking and looking further. And that takes a lot of time. There's always more to observe and more to think about, but minimalism gives me a lot of time for those things. Now your personality might not value those things as highly, which is perfectly fine. There are other reasons why people become minimalist and some of the other reasons, I've written them down here, are because people want to be become more eco-friendly, which even though I didn't go into minimalism to become more eco-friendly, that's just a side effect. There's no way that you're going to become more minimalist and not be, it's not going to be better for the environment. That That's just a side effect of that. So you don't even need to concentrate on that if you don't want to. However, if you're vegan like my sister is and my best friend, if you really care about the environment and that's your maximum priority, then it really helps. And some people, their maximum priority is their spirituality or their spending time with their kids, adequate time with their kids, and that helps that priority too. So minimalism works for everybody because it doesn't cost anything. It's not a cause that you have to pay into, that you have to abide by the rules. It works for you and that's why it's the cause for me because it promotes freedom, true freedom and true autonomy. It's not just lip service and then it's making all these rules. It should be working where you have everything you need to be the maximum person you can be. In other words, live into your purpose, which is why I like minimalism because it delineates your purpose. You can't hide from your purpose because when all the stuff it melts away, it becomes obvious what your purpose is. And some people can go into overdrive and just minimize, minimize, minimize because they treat it as like a competition or they're fueled by fear. But I wanna talk about that because there are a lot of reasons to go into minimalism 
travel, eco, you want to be more eco-friendly, you want to spend time with your kids, but fear should not be a motivator. And fear was my motivator. In college, fear was my motivator that I would not have enough resources, I would not have enough time to be able to handle everything, so I became extremely minimalist. And people that go through pain or sorrow in breakups or in in college, they, they often look at minimalism as the answer. And well, that's okay because obviously it worked out for me. The fear shouldn't be the number one motivator because there will never be enough. You'll constantly be downsizing and maybe even buying more and then downsizing again and it becomes a vicious cycle. So you have to get into the root of fear. Why are you afraid of having a lot of stuff? Just like you, there's fear of hoarding because people don't want to be seen as having a lack. There's also fear of having too much stuff. Some people can be very obsessional about it, but the job in life is not to minimize so that all practicality is diminished. For instance, I have multiple I have multiple dishes because I want to have water all around the house because that helps me to drink more water. So in the end, it, it encourages autonomy and efficiency, but efficiency not at the cost of me being able to reach my goals. So if it ever starts to go too far, then you just bring it back closer towards the center. You don't want it to be where you're, minimize, you're minimizing everything just for the sake of minimizing things or that it just becomes another obsession because hoarding can be an obsession, minimizing can be an obsession, but we really just want to be practical. So some people can become minimalist because of the fear or they're just concentrating on that one thing that they shouldn't be concentrating on. And what I mean by that is everybody has weaknesses in their life. You might be bad at socializing. You might be bad at negotiating pay for business. I don't know what your weakness is, but sometimes we can just get caught up on one thing, researching something that has nothing to do with our weakness, or just start organizing, organizing, organizing to avoid our problems, or buying, buying, buying to avoid our problems, or decluttering, 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 and that's not the way you want to use minimalism because minimalism is supposed to be funneling into a purpose. So you don't want to use it as another vice or another sidetrack from what you should be getting to. You should be using minimalism not as a goal in and of itself, but so that it can help you to become the best version of yourself so that it gives you, it clears your schedule and your mind so that you can be really mindful of what is affecting what, what thoughts, what things, what people, what is affecting what, but it clears your mind and it clears your schedule so you can go after and be the best version of yourself. I don't know what you're not good at, but whatever you're not good at, there are there's so much information online. There are so many books. You for sure can find someone who's good at that. You can read about it and you can become very good at that weakness. The key is just not to ignore that weakness. Don't use minimalism as a thing to ignore your problems, but as a way to clear the path so you can head, you can focus, laser focus, and get to those problems. My primary way of using minimalism was to get through college, and I got through college. It was a very difficult career, which is court reporting. Only 10% made it out, and so I knew I had to be laser focused on that, and I got out, and then when I got out, I started doing court work, but in my mind, I knew I always wanted to work from home. But some people will get caught up in freelancing or court work because it pays a lot of money. It pays even better than we get paid at home. I knew that my personality just fits with working from home and adding to my blog and talking and I didn't want my whole life to be about stenography. And so I, because I was a minimalist, it was very easy transition. I was able to go immediately from freelance within a year, start working from home for radio. And that was my dream job to be able to listen to politics and write it every morning was my dream job. But the problem is, is a lot of people can't go there because they have so many bills they incur. They have so many desires and those desires keep them locked into a job they can't stand or a lifestyle they can't stand. And what happens is it becomes a catch 22 or a vicious cycle because you are so busy trying to keep up with everything. You don't have the time or the space to think, to sit down and think, okay, what is affecting what? What actually do I really want out of life? What are my true values? There is no time to think about that because you're doing returns, you're buying things, you're booking trips, you're on a treadmill that it's just too much. So minimalism gives the clarity and the focus to clear everything out of the way and live your true purpose and your dream life. For me, I call myself a minimalist not because I really care about labels, but because 
that helps people find you. It helps people to know what you stand for. Well, fear and guilt and control can lead to good ends. There are so many other ways that lead to those ends as well, like inspiration and optimism and hope. There are plenty of other better ways to do things than through control or guilt or fear. So I hope that this video helped you out. I hope that you can clear the clutter in your life, even if you don't want to be a minimalist, and find some level of freedom and sanity and purpose. Thank you guys so much for watching.